Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you to delve into your word. We just ask in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you would open the eyes of our understanding that we may see what you intend for us to see on tonight, not only on this message, but in all the messages, the application of it to our souls and our spirits, and that we may walk it out. May we not be just hearers, and we also be doers of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, Luke 8, 22 through 25 is the text from which I'll be pulling the illustration from. And it reads, Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples and said unto them, Let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. And then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wandered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? But he commands even the winds and water, and they obey him. Mm -hmm. Upon reading and meditating upon this passage, a revelation appeared to me concerning storms or difficult times that we face in life. We stepped all over this message. Powerful. <clears throat> Why do the storms come? How do we handle them? And we have a responsibility to press on. All this will be played out in the illustration of the storm. The title of the message is called Lessons of the Storm. Lessons of the Storm. Prior to this point of scripture, Jesus had been teaching on the kingdom. He had been casting out demons. He had been healing people. So the disciples that followed him witnessed these things because they've never experienced any kind of wonderment as what they had witnessed Jesus doing. So then Jesus follows that up on the heels of all that he says let us go over to the other side that's all the disciples had and in life to get in the ship and let's go to the other side they didn't know what was going to happen in between but they got in the ship and they rode with Jesus as believers we can relate to the disciples how many of us have seen God do wonderful things for people, mm -hmm. right? To include ourselves. How many of us have been where we saw a wonderful thing happen and it increased our willingness to follow Jesus all the more? In fact, we said, I want more of that. I want to go higher. I want to go higher in him. So Jesus says, okay, let's go get in the boat and let's go over to the other side. Now notice, um, there's no warning about the storm passing. Jesus falls asleep, in fact. The Bible says, as they were going, the storm descended. And in that region, uh, storms descended quite a bit in, on, in that lake region. So there were quite a bit of storms that happened all the time. It was a common occurrence. The question that Jesus asks locates why this whole thing happened. He says, where is your faith? Where's your faith? And in the Amplified, it says, where's your faith in me? Faith is a total reliance upon or leaning upon God in this case. Right? So we have faith in God to trust him. May I submit to you this thought? One does not really know the integrity of faith or what one believes until a test or trial proves it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you believe, you really don't, <clears throat> until you go through something and it puts you in a place where you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. Do I follow or don't I? You laid out some powerful examples of what happens when disappointment comes, mm -hmm. when trials, when tests come. How do I handle this? What do I do? Um, I asked a series of questions of the Holy Spirit 
concerning the disciples' reaction. Of course, they were panicking. And I said, well, Lord, you had, at least as far as I understand it, four fishermen on that boat. You had Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Certainly they understood the severity of storms because they must have experienced it in the past. They must have. Can you blame them for their reaction? I don't know about you, but I've never been through a storm on the water like that. But I've been through storms of life. Trials, tests, been hard. And you may not have gone through the same kind of trial or test that I've gone through, but it's all relevant, right? Your test or your trial means, makes a big difference to you. And so my question then was, wasn't Jesus a little harsh? A little harsh. I'm asking real questions. <clears throat> questions that some of us are afraid to ask. Wasn't Jesus a little harsh? Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit responded with some powerful things, lessons of the storm. He said, first off, it's always a question of your faith. Mm -hmm. Always a question of your faith. The Apostle James says in James the first chapter, Verse 2 through 8, he says, My brethren, count it all joy mm -hmm. when you fall into divers' temptations, different test trials. Knowing this, verse 3, knowing this, verse 3, knowing this, verse 3, you have to know something when you go through a test or trial. That the trying of your faith works patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect in attire, or mature, whole, strong, sturdy, wanting nothing. And then how am I supposed to go all through all of this? James says, let any man that lacks wisdom ask of God. He doesn't keep it back. He gives it liberally. Only let him ask in faith. Right? For, for he that is wavers is like the wind and the waves, he's tossed to and fro, right? For let not that man think he'll receive anything from God. He's unstable in all his ways. And then the Apostle Peter echoes the same thing in 1 Peter, the first verse, six, verses 6 through 7, where he says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Tests, trials. That the trying of your faith, Again, your faith is being tried. It's always a question of your faith. Might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus because it's tried in fire. You don't go through anything that you do for God that you're not trying. Especially if you want to go higher in here. Go back to the ship. Number two. First, trying of your faith. It's always a question of your faith. Two. Didn't Jesus say, let us go over to the other side? You think Jesus is going to go down with the ship? He's with us, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He's with us. He's not, going to, he's not going to abandon us. Jesus was asleep. A silence never constitutes abandonment. Mm -hmm. We may be in the midst of a trial and we don't hear anything as Lydia had mentioned. But that doesn't mean that we're not, that he's not with us. Didn't, wasn't there a promise of the Holy Spirit being with us and in us? <clears throat> so there's nothing that we go through, a test or a trial, that he's not there to guide us. Just because we don't hear him does not mean that he's not there. And so I'm reminded of King David when he wrote the 23rd Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. And then he says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But the main point is, Thou art with me. So, second point, he's with you. He's not going to leave nor forsake you. He'll stay right with you. The third point is, how do we handle the storm? We tend to ask, where did this come from? Was this the devil? 
Was it you, Lord? I can't believe it was you. Was it my stupid decision? As I went through what I had gone through, severe major test, test trials, I asked the Lord that question, where did it come from? And he said, son, at this point in your life, it doesn't matter where it came from. It matters what you do when it does come. How do you handle that? On the boat, the storm comes, the disciples, point one, the, the disciples are reacting in fear because the storm dictates to them. That's one way you can handle a storm. The second way is Jesus dictating to the storm. That's our example. So we have two examples, one where the storm dictates to us and the other where we can dictate to the storm, peace be still. Well, how do you get through that? James just finished telling you, kind of all joy, my brother, when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work. Right? There's a development that happens in the process of faith being tried. So, trying of your faith, you're not alone, and we must respond properly to storms. If you read, why do we go through what we go through? What's the end result? If you read the rest of Luke's eighth chapter, you'll find out that Jesus, after the storm, he gets to the other side, he meets the man that has legion, casts it out, gets back onto the boat, goes to the other side, Darius is waiting for him, says, Master, can you come and pray for my daughter? She's at the point of death. As he's on his way to go do that, the woman with the issue of blood touches the hem of his garment. The launching pad is the storm. The launching pad is the storm. Jesus went through it for our sake. He teaches us we're supposed to learn of Christ, have the mind of Christ. These things are not beyond God's provision for us to handle the storm the way that we're supposed to handle it. Um, I wrote, God uses the storms in life to develop us in, in our faith so that we can bridge the gap for others to be ministered to. It is interesting to note that in James, the first chapter, and in First Peter, the first chapter, the chapters that we just read, the text actually starts off in the first verse. They both say to the scattered. James says to the scattered 12 tribes. Peter says to the scattered pilgrims, or pilgrims, right? What does storm, a storm experience do? How else is God going to get his word over here, that or that? We're carriers of the word, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So how else are we supposed to get those, God's supposed to get the word over here for that one, or there for this one? lest he scatter. Also interesting to note that before Jesus starts off uh, the, the, that experience, the, the beginning of chapter 8, he talks about the sowing of the seed. And the sower, what? Scatter. Scatters the seed. And then he says about being a light. So we're supposed to be light so that others can see. Right? And so here we have a platform for God's provision to be sent out into all the world. Now, I'm a treasure hunter, and in closing, I'm a treasure hunter, and <clears throat> when I was going through some difficult times, um, the Lord brought this up to my remembrance, and I said, Lord, I, I want to get a metal detector. I want to go on the beach and comb the beach for gold, silver, red, do this thing. And I studied, and I, and the Lord asks me a question. He says, when's the best time to go looking for treasure? And I smiled because I knew the answer. He said, just after a storm. Just after a storm. And he says, the reason why it's just it's good to go after the storm is because the agitation and the turbulence of the storm dredges up what's on the bottom, the gold and the silver that's buried in the sand, and it deposits it on the shore. So the next time that we go through something, the question isn't, why me? The question is, where's the treasure? What in me are you bringing out in me? What, where can I marry that up with your word that I may be a, a hope for somebody to be able to make it through? Amen? Amen.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that seed was planted on tonight. Seed was watered. And Father, we just pray that you would bring the increase in your time. And that we would remember that whenever we go through something, to ask where the treasure is. So that we could bring you further glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.